you can see be from the sign behind me. I'm at the Belgian National Tobacco Museum. It's in a little town called Werwick, which is right on the French border. And apparently in the old days, 90% of the tobacco processed in Belgium was processed here. Well, I asked the woman on the desk inside and she said it was alright to film inside. So uh, I'm going to go in and show you a few snippets of uh, what they've got in. Uh, what I've got to show you. Um, I think that I've been in here before. There's a lot of machinery and some of the tobacco products, pipes, stuff like that. I'll get what I can and uh, you can have a look for yourselves. Uh, some stuff from the South American connections. Interesting and varied devices for lighting your uh, pipes and cigars. Some naughty tobacco tins and uh, tobacco related products and advertisements. Small pipes from the area. advertising boards and this is from the uh, when tobacco was produced here uh, extensively these are the old tobacco packets old health tiles with uh, tobacco related images the grinding wheels from the old mill and then we go on to some of the uh, equipment they used for uh, curing and making tobacco product stuff Tobacco and the Egyptian connection. Not exactly the best preserved mummy in the world. I think this is where all the old clay pipes go to die. Some old clay pipe manufacturing gear. Standard clay pipes. Some of the fancier clay pipes.
God, I'd love to have some of these in the bar collection. Decorated porcelain pipes. And one less than popular pipe smoker. That's a beauty, I really like that pipe. What you could expect to see at the back of this in the oldie days. Now here's some, oh, now here's some tobacco-y stuff, uh, pipes and that from uh, war years. <coughs> Old Tommy's in the Tommy helmets there. Brady Mark, Brody Mark II, they were called. Light is made out of bullets and arms, shells, shell bits. That's interesting. That's something from the First World War. But, uh, one year, they were distributed to all the troops. They're called Princess Mary tins. And for smokers, they had uh, tobacco in. And for non-smokers, they had sweets in. It was a Christmas present from one of the royals to the serving British and uh, Imperial and Commonwealth troops on the front line. Not modern ones, but all various no smoking here signs. In various languages. There's a nice cafe here as well, for after you've been to the museum you want to stop off and have a little drink. Unfortunately, due to modern laws, no smoking inside, but you can still smoke on the terrace. And here we've got some more tobacco processing machinery. how this compares to the modern machines. I've never been inside a modern tobacco factory. This was an all tobacco processing factory in its day and it was powered by a windmill. Unfortunately I don't think you can go up there anymore. You used to be able to. Uh, it's locally known as the Brick Molen, which basically means a brick windmill. Um, that's the inside visit over. Uh, on the outside, at the back, uh, there's a, a cafe on one side where you can go and have a drink and uh, a smoke if it's dry enough to sit outside to smoke. Unfortunately, no smoking inside in cafes Belgium now. Uh, but the other side of the museum, there's a, a really nice garden, and you can see the old windmill that used to power the uh, tobacco processing. Uh, right, it's a bit of the garden here. Nice place to come and sit in the summer. And this is the old windmill. 
locally known as the Brick Molen. I'll translate it straight into English as Brick Windmill. And here's a bit more of the garden, nice herb garden, nice place to come and sit, have a smoke if you want, and a bit more of the windmill. I'm standing on a little footbridge now that crosses the River Leia in Flemish, uh, known as the River Lys in France, in French, France, in French. Uh, this is where a lot of boats used to come in with the unprocessed tobacco and then leave with the processed tobacco to go for export or to go to other parts of Belgium. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful old river. It, uh, it's still used for commercial use today. You see, uh, uh, today is a Sunday, so there's no big barges on it, but on a weekday, you see, Hell, a lot of big barges taking stuff up through to Belgium, Germany, France, all around Europe. From here you can connect through to the River Danube and the River Rhine using various canals. I'll show you a bit of the river now. Lovely, eh? Just a bit further up where you can see that other bridge. On the left side is Belgium and on the right side is France. I'll just show you the other side. <coughs> oh, and what I said about boats doesn't seem to be right. <laughs> the boats aren't supposed to travel on a Sunday, as far as I know for the rules, but he's travelling. And he's low in the water as well, which means he's fully laden. You can see about one fifth of that boat, there'll be another four fifths underneath the water there. And that <coughs> And that concludes my little trip to the Belgian National Tobacco Museum. I uh, hope this has all come out uh, all right. I wasn't planning to do this today. Uh, it was just a trip that happened by accident. So uh, I hope that you all enjoyed the video. And uh, I'll see what else I can dig out for you at another time. Uh, Middle-aged Mona signing out. Middle-aged. Oh, there's my hand. Middle-aged Mona signing out. Bye.